Uh, if it were up to me, I'd have unzipped my vest, um, threw it all off, gone to the local bridge, closest bridge, and I'd have jumped off. I just didn't want any more of it. We've done a video called The, the Job Bro Broke Me on, on YouTube, um, and it's basically, it's like half an hour long of the, the, uh, the, the reasons what happened all in one. I've got 19 years in the police. I've got so many fatals that I were dealing with all the time. I've, I've got the negativity. I lost my mum, my dad in quick succession, and I, I went to a two-year-old decapitated by a truck. And things started to um, accumulate all at once. But if you want to get to the, the the far side of why I decided to go, I was waking up every morning, and the longer that I had off work, the better in myself I felt. And it's really weird. It's a really strange concept that you have nineteen years of being told every single thing about when you, uh, and you do, you can't explain this until you're in a, a discipline service like the police um, army fire anything like that but you're told how to dress you're told when you're eating you're told when you can have leave and how much leave you're having a year and i know people say well that's why you joined and that's well it is why you joined but then there's a certain point you think you're living a life and you're trying to please everybody all at once and you're seeing that you're putting 100 effort into life people are putting in 30 percent effort and they're coming out on top they're always coming out on top and you're feeling no matter how much I pushed, I won't get him back what I wanted to get back at that moment in time. So the one one day that I phoned in sick and didn't want to go back to work, it was always one of these things where I could be laying in bed with severe flu or I'd have an operation on my kidneys and I'd be gagging to go back to work. Then it got to a point then where it felt like no matter how much effort I put into the job, I wasn't getting the love, I wasn't getting the 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 quality back from what I needed so every day you were going into work and you had it were constantly like fuck you pig get a real job you were bullied at school and you've got no better do we time and this were now not from shitbag burglars but this were from now just decent normal members of the public Where, whatever area you drove in uh, why you here what you're doing here well I've, I've drove from Bradford to Ilkley I'm going to have a meal uh, and then obviously do some work in Ilkley what do you mean meal? Why you can't meal? You've you've got a job to do, and it will. So it's like no matter what you do, um, it won't good enough. And then when you come back in at police station, you've got KPIs, key performance indicators to show you how much work you've got to be able to do. In then you've got people in file um, parts of the police that completely file bollocking you because you haven't put a, an MG six B four eight in on a thirty page file because you've only had 20 minutes to deal with it because you've come in on your lunch break when you're meant to be sat lunching and not working that you are bollocked for trying harder. So they want enough hours in there. <clears throat> then on top of that, you were getting home, you were shattered, you had your kids, and it was just getting to the point where it, it was breaking me. And the, the longer I had off, um, the better I felt about myself, the better my mental health felt. Um, and then in regards to the police, I was just... Uh, the and I'm not being negative for the police because I've never been negative for the police and I'll never say anything negative about the police or especially the West Shorts police. But it felt like they weren't wanting you to come back. It felt like they weren't wanting... And then they say they do, they give you the words. They tell you we want you to come back. But they only tell you that because it's from the HR point of view. There's not one person from the top pulling you back and saying, look, we want you, Ben, we love you, we need you, we love your work. It, it was literally just a, a paper exercise and then they were offering me jobs such as like, so this is what I found really funny. So I've got severe mental health issues. I'm severely depressed. I've got severe anxiety. Uh, I'm contemplating suicide all the time. So I said, do you want to have a job on firearms register? And I'm like, what? So it'd be like logging people with guns and making sure they're safe to have guns. And I'm like, so you're giving that to someone with severe mental health issues? It's like they want, they want the thought of, of what needed to be in the job. And I said, why don't they just leave me home and let me do West Shorts Police's Twitter and Facebook accounts? But then I got bollocked for putting some on Twitter when I were off sick because you're trying to endorse the police and doing stuff. And it was just strangling me and it was killing me. And I just thought, it's not making my mental health any better. It's making me a bad person. It's making me a bad dad. I want to see my kids. And I just thought then, being poor there, I either pick a channel, I either commit suicide or ever become a lot less of a person or I boost myself and try and grow as a person. And that's why I thought it's a, it's a chance now of 
but I don't go back. I, I, I become the dad and partner that I needed to be and I get my mental health back in order. And it's hard when you've got to pick a switch. It's hard when they stop, they talk about racing car drivers or professional football players when they come to the end of the, the professional sportsmanship or whatever it is. And you think, uh, I'm done. I want to go out on top. Um, but I'd gone out to the top and I'd gone down to the side and it still wasn't getting good enough. So it broke my heart and it's something I was born to do and I, I love doing and I'm, I do miss it. Uh, I don't miss being a bobby, if that makes sense. I miss the job as in like I miss helping people. There's a, there's a massive difference there. Um, but yeah, that's it. I, it, it had to be for my, for my own, in, uh, own insanity, own sanity, because some people just don't don't know what you're going through, don't see what you're going through. And I made a choice, it were either my life or it were the police. And unfortunately for them, my life comes first and it always will do. So I was very, very low at this moment in time. It's constant negativity that's getting at me. My mental health's frying. And I went to a bump with baby Ben on rural lane and it was something and nothing. The gentleman had cut his hand. I remember the three lane carriageway. I remember um, when we pulled up in the X5 and I remember putting my hand on the door handle and opening the door. And it was so weird that when my head came out through the air pillar of the car, I just saw it stepped out as soon as my foot hit the floor, the switch goes and it will literally like, right, we'll get out. We'll get out. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. He's there. They, they need this. We'll do that. And then as soon as I got out, I just went, it's like, I can't give a flying fuck. I don't want to be here. I don't want to, I don't want to live. I don't want to, I don't want to be part of this whole situation. I know I were in uniform. Uh, I knew there were police car there. People were talking to me. I knew I had a pen on me and my, my book to write on. Didn't give a fuck. Didn't want to write. Uh, if it were up to me, I'd have unzipped my vest, um, threw it all off, gone to the local bridge, closest bridge, and I'd have jumped off. I just didn't want any more of it. But it was just, it was just the circumstance of everything that went on. And I just like, I just started crying. And I knew I'd gone. I, I, when they say you've had a mental breakdown, you, you know you've had a breakdown. Because you, you can't think of anything apart from why the fuck am I crying? Why am I checking? And I don't want anything else around me. Don't touch me. Don't talk to me. Don't come near me. I, all I want to do is I want to curl up in a little ball, um, go on my quill, and I never want to come out again. Uh, and if I can't do that, I'm going to hang myself off a fucking rope. But if it were up to me, I'd have unzipped my vest and I just said, I'm going. And I just jumped. But you've got family, you've got kids. And I don't know what it is. I think there's just so much pressure that, and there's only so much pressure that one person can take. And irrespective of the, the, the job, it's, people do other jobs, but it's, there's only so much your mind, your body and your soul can take through um, things building up all the time. And that's why I, I always say to people now, it's, it's so easy to deal with. It's so easy to just be able to talk beforehand. But I never understood that. I never understood there were a, there were a, a pressure cooker taking off. Um, I never understood there was a um, the revolve you could release and release some of this pressure because people don't explain that to you and that's why now it's very very important to be able to to be able to talk about your feelings to be able to discuss stuff and it's not about being an alpha male or alpha female but yeah there's one minute in your life and that that was one minute and it was probably like the first 10 seconds of that one minute that's just changed the course of my life forever and then I know it sounds stupid this is going to sound real the disgust that I felt in myself the disgust wearing the uniform, the disgust in the failure of who I was as a person. Um, it's just tremendous. And the weight on your shoulders of just like not being who you thought you'd be. And then it's like simple, officer, I've been hurt. I've, I fuck off. I don't want to know. Leave me alone. You don't have that right to talk to those people like that, but they don't see what's going on behind and the demons that are, that are, that are they're basically they're killing you, they're smothering you, they're suffocating you. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the moment when basically my life fucked up and it all went wrong. It was picked up by my partner, Millie, that I had massive issues. And then, um, I got referred straight to the mental health unit at Shipley and they, the, 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 the lack of, even like now I can start myself starting to stutter. So just bear with me. The lack of, um, understanding was the main thing and the lack of knowing what wronged me, um, that were the main Part. I just thought I was psychotic. I thought I were a bit of a serial killer or I just thought there was something inside me that was snapping and I thought like, I'm going to go on a fucking rampage here. I'm going to do something stupid. But as soon as they diagnosed you and went, right, this is what's wrong with you. You've got a, ma a massive mental health issue. That's just, you've, it, this has been hidden for so long. Just go back to complete basics. And that's how I went. 
everything went out window, TV went out window, um, phone went out window, relationships went out window, stopped talking to people, stopped integrating with people. It just it was just too much. And all I wanted to do was go to bed, sleep, go to bed, sleep. And it was the understanding of that on my side of the fence. That's what helped me going through. Now, if I didn't have that, I'm being honest with you, if I lived alone, I'd have jumped. If I had no family, I'd have jumped. But it were my kids. I didn't want my kids to... I've, lo- I've had mates who've lost their parents when you were younger. I didn't want my kids to be one of those people. So that's what kept me grounded as well. But it were a struggle. It were a fight. There were times when that were really weren't enough as well. And then the the, 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 the other thing that 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 um, pushed it was the fact like the response then from work, my sergeant at the time, a female sergeant, were fantastic. Um, the, 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 the other people that I were dealing with at the time were fantastic. But the work structure itself, the HR, the, the, the policies and stuff, just drained you. There were no easy way to push back, if that makes sense. Everyone wanted something from you. So it was never easy to get back on your feet. It's just like you're constantly kicked and punched when you're down. And you're constantly kicked and punched so you can't take any more. Um, uh, and th- that were it, basically. In it's where it's... And what people don't see now is it's two years of therapy, a lot of therapy, and I am I'm pumped full of medication every day to keep me on the straight and narrow, to keep me how I am now. Uh, if I didn't have medication, I wouldn't be how I am now. And people say, oh, look at you, fine, you're cured. And I'm, I'm never going to be cured. I've got fucking no brain power. I've got no memory. I've got... Um, I can't think past like 20 minutes. Um, I'm constantly tired and lethargic. My diet's always off. I cry all the time. Um, I've got massive uh, anxiety for social skills. Even though, oh, yeah, you do this and you you know from TV. It's it's bollocks. You see what you want to see and I'll be who I want to be. But without the medication, I won't be doing anything. It's just fucking hard word. And it's... It's hard for people that, and especially I feel like I've, I've succeeded because of people like you, Josh, and my family that have, that have given me structure. And I think if people don't have that, that's why they fall down.